What happened to the Fry Twins? The Fry Twins were born in November of 1847, so 169 to 170 years ago. Spoiler warning, we're going to be talking about what happened to them, so what I just said was complete and utter bollocks. I don't know why I put it there. After the events of Assassin's Creed Syndicate, with the Templar Grandmaster eliminated, the twins continued their struggle to help London's underclass. The Fries soon distanced themselves from Queen Victoria to avoid their cooperation in Imperial interests, but the British capital itself entered a 20-year period of relative peace. During that time, Henry Green and Evie Fry relocated to India. However, Jacob Fry remained in London to reinforce the Brotherhood with no apprentices and maintained the Rooks gang. Along with this, Jacob had at least one child who was interested in the Assassin Order. One of Jacob's apprentices was a boy from Lambeth Asylum known as Jack the Lad, who we know became quite the problem by the year of 1888, who had by this point created a very extremist view of the Assassin's mission and created his own warped version of the Creed. Long story short, because this is not the bigger picture here, he became Jack the Ripper. Prior to Jacob's abduction by the hand of Jack the Ripper, he requested that Evie Fry return to London. Honouring the request, Evie began searching for him and investigating the murder scenes of Jack's many victims. Jacob was eventually located by his sister, barely alive and in a semi-conscious state. After killing Jack and his accomplices, Evie went to help her brother and, with the aid of Inspector Frederick Aberline, obscured the identity of the Ripper to prevent the potential compromising of the Brotherhood. This is by the year of 1888. In 1893, Jacob's granddaughter Lydia Fry was born. Lydia Fry's parents were often away on missions for the Brotherhood, meaning responsibility for Lydia's training fell into the hands of Jacob and Evie. So we know that by the year 1893, they were still alive. Though they were only in this, their mid-40s at this point, they could have been killed, I guess, but they were only in their mid-40s at this point. We also know that some 21 years later, they were still alive at the outbreak of the First World War, as they were removed to the safety of the countryside, while Lydia Fry remained in London to protect the city from German spies and Templar agents. So, we know that they were still alive in 1914, at the age of about 66 to 67. Nothing is known about what happened to them after the outbreak of the First World War in 1914. If they lived to the end of the First World War, they would have been in their 70s already. My best guess would be that they probably died some point during the First World War. Back then, about 70 was a really good age to be at death. It was really old back then. You wouldn't usually have lived that long. During the mid-19th century, life expectancy was about 40 years. During the 20th century, or the early 20th century at least, life expectancy was about 50. There were a fair few people who exceeded that though. And given that Jacob and Evie Fry are confirmed to have lived into their mid to late 60s, we know that they definitely did exceed the average life expectancies back then. But given that by the outbreak of the First World War, they weren't going to fight, they weren't going to stay in London and help Lydia Fry, they weren't in a condition where they could, they were old, they weren't as active anymore, they were definitely not ready for that anymore they were definitely on their deathbeds as it were so i'd imagine that that in mind they probably did die at some point during the first world war if not around the 1920 mark however in 1868 they did definitely come into physical contact with a shroud of eden which could have had effects on them although none are confirmed they definitely both came into physical contact with the shroud which might have had effects on their health or their youth or their aging and could have given them a couple extra years on the end if you know what I mean. Given that it was very brief I wouldn't imagine it would have been a great impact so I won't waver on my point that they probably died at some point during the First World War if not a few years after. This is based on the fact that they'd already exceeded the life expectancy by nearly two decades by the point of which the First World War broke out and also that they weren't in any condition to be active 
in London and were evacuated to the countryside where they wouldn't have to worry about German spies or anything, which makes me think they weren't in any condition to fight, probably because they were on their deathbeds. Now, one of them could have died during the First World War and one of them could have died in the few years after, or vice versa, or anything like that, or they could have both just been killed by a Templar or something. We, anything could have happened. Natural causes is probably the most likely at this point, though. Considering that they were old and tired and probably not well. I really don't feel as if there's much else to it. But thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead and leave a like, subscribe, share, comment, tell your friends about this channel. And I will see you all in the next one with another video at some point. So yeah. Fall out. Loosened in Starrick's machine. Boy. A large bolt. Boy. But not enough, boy. This is the face of a bisexual. Lost your bottle, boys! Lost your voice, boys!